Have you ever heard that old story about the cop who was killed in a shootout because he stopped to pick up and pocket his empty brass from his revolver while he was reloading? Well, it turns out that probably didn't happen. Hey everybody, I am Chris Baker from LuckyGunner.com. Sorry if my voice sounds a little off today, I'm getting over a cold. Today we are gonna talk about this myth, where it came from, what really happened, and how it still impacts defensive firearms training today. The story is most often told to illustrate the danger of so-called training scars. That's the theory that certain habits we unintentionally develop during training might turn out to be counterproductive when we actually have to perform under real world pressure. In this scenario, the policy of the police shooting range had supposedly conditioned this officer to immediately pocket his empty brass casings every time he reloaded his revolver. When he got into a real gunfight, he reverted back to that behavior. His assailant caught him off guard either while he was collecting these cases or pocketing them. His body was found with an unloaded gun and uh, empty cases in his pocket. So the moral of the story is to train how you fight, make your training as realistic as possible, or you might die. It's not a bad lesson, but unfortunately the story itself is probably fictional. I say probably because it's possible that something like that may have happened to some officer somewhere, we can't really know for sure, but it's usually associated with the infamous 1970 Newhall shooting, and it's almost certain it did not happen there. The Newhall incident, sometimes called the Newhall Massacre, is one of a handful of events in the 20th century that drove major changes in law enforcement training nationwide. Four California Highway Patrolmen were killed by two suspects during a traffic stop. Newhall has been covered in great detail in numerous articles and videos and books. If you really want to get into it, I recommend the book Newhall Shooting, A Tactical Analysis by Mike Wood. Mike also happens to be the senior editor of the excellent blog at revolverguy.com. The basic gist of the story is that two California Highway Patrolmen pulled over a suspicious vehicle late at night. The two occupants pretended to comply at first, but then they shot and killed both officers. Before the suspects could escape, another pair of officers arrived in a second patrol car. They exchanged gunfire for a while, and eventually those officers were killed as well. More officers arrived as the suspects escaped on foot. One of them surrendered a few hours later and was later convicted. The other committed suicide after a brief hostage standoff. The California Highway Patrol made several changes to their policies and training program in the aftermath. For example, at the range, they required officers to eject their empty brass onto the ground to clean up later. Previously, they would eject empties uh, either into their hand or into a bucket that was on a table in front of them. The pocket full of brass rumor most likely started when someone heard about the policy change and assumed that it was a direct result of a specific mistake made by one of the officers at Newhall. That rumor made its way into law enforcement publications and gun magazines. Numerous variations of that story still remain a part of gun culture and cop lore more than 50 years later. There was an attempted reload during the New Hall incident, but it failed for different reasons than the myth. The true version of the story comes with its own set of cautionary lessons that have also become part of common firearms training doctrine. The reload was attempted by Officer James Pence with his 6-inch 357 Magnum Colt Python. Pence and Officer George Allen were in the second patrol car that arrived on the scene. At that point, the suspects Jack Twining and Bobby Davis had just killed the first two responding officers and were already shooting at the second car as it pulled up. While Pence radioed for backup, the suspects both entered the passenger side of their vehicle to retrieve more firearms. Pence got out of the driver's side of his car and returned fire, but missed with all six rounds. He then retreated to the rear of the patrol car and took cover in a kneeling position to reload. During that movement, he ejected his empty shell casings, which were later found on the ground. 
Pence had his spare ammo in a dump pouch on his right side. They were not issued speed loaders at that time. With a dump pouch, you would unsnap the flap and the rounds would just fall out into your hand. So he was reloading his revolver one round at a time. In the meantime, Twining advanced over to Pence's left side. With a Colt 1911, he shot Pence four times, twice in the lower torso and once in each leg. Pence continued loading his revolver. He got the sixth round in the chamber and was just about to close the cylinder. But by then, Twining had advanced to within just a few feet away. He fired one final shot that struck Pence in the back of the head, killing him instantly. This version of the events is supported by eyewitness reports and the physical evidence collected at the scene. No brass was found in Pence's pocket. Crime scene photos show all six shells on the ground next to the rear driver's side door of Pence's patrol car. So the pocket full of brass training scar story is undoubtedly false, but there was a very real problem with a lack of realism in police firearms training at the time, and that was one of the many contributing factors to the New Hall tragedy. The majority of the shooting on the range was done with a traditional one-handed grip with a support hand on the hip in a bladed competition-style stance. Department firearms instructors considered all four of the slain officers to be outstanding marksmen, Yet, none of them managed to get a direct hit on either of the suspects during the gunfight. Emergency reloading was not a skill that was taught or practiced. Shooters would load their guns from boxes or trays on a table at the firing line. It's very possible that Pence had never even attempted to use his dump pouch until the night he was killed. I wanted to get an idea of how fast this kind of reload technique would be, so I tried it out at the range. Now we don't have an old fashioned dump pouch or a six inch python, so I used a Smith & Wesson Model 64 and I just pulled the loose rounds from my pants pocket. It's not quite the same, but either way, you're loading six rounds with a handful of cartridges that are in no specific orientation. My first attempt was 17 seconds, after several more tries, I had one that felt like it went pretty smoothly, and that was 13 seconds. Even if Pence somehow managed to reload his python in only 10 seconds, that would have still given Twining plenty of time to flank him. And that brings us to another commonly taught training point that likely originated with Newhall, and that's the idea of task fixation. Pence seemed to be completely focused on loading his gun. He knew that his life depended on completing that task. There was no room in his brain for attempting to keep up with his attacker's position. Some firearms instructors are emphatic about avoiding this fallacy, and they will even use Pence as an example. You might hear phrases like, keep your head up or keep your eyes on the threat. Again, that is probably good advice in principle. You don't want to get so preoccupied with your equipment that you lose track of what's going on around you. But this can be taken to an extreme like the modern no-look reload. The idea that if you even glance at your semi-automatic pistol while you're reloading, the bad guy is going to take advantage of that and catch you off guard. I really don't know if that's what we should be taking away from the New Hall incident. I think a more relevant lesson is the importance of unconscious competence. Operating the gun should not require any conscious mental effort. You don't usually have to be the quickest or the most accurate as long as your gun handling skills are on autopilot. That frees up mental resources for other important things like who needs to be shot and who doesn't, or you might be able to maintain the presence of mind to, let's say, look up every once in a while during your 15 second revolver reload. On top of the training issue, events like New Hall always bring up questions about equipment. In hindsight, we can make the argument that the officers may have been better off with higher capacity semi-autos, but that was such a foreign concept in police culture at the time that I don't even know if CHP seriously considered it, even in the aftermath of New Hall but they did begin to issue speed loaders instead of the dump pouches. After a little practice, most shooters can learn to reload in about five or six seconds with a speed loader. With a duty style speed loader pouch, I can pretty consistently pull it off in less than five seconds under ideal range conditions, sometimes under four seconds if I get really lucky. 
That's with a Safari Land Comp 2 speed loader, which didn't come around until the 1980s, but some of the 70s era speed loaders were just as fast. A speed loader would have been a massive advantage for Officer Pence, even if he had not spent a ton of time to get really fast with it. It's not just faster than a dump pouch, it's a much more reliable and stress resistant way to reload a revolver. Another potential option for Pence was a partial reload, tragically something he probably had never been taught. There was no reason Pence had to load all six rounds before returning fire. That's part of the problem with the task fixation in his particular case. If he had seen twining Coming up, he could have just closed the cylinder right then with however many rounds he had loaded up to that point. I attempted the same single round loading procedure as before, but I stopped after getting three rounds in the cylinder. I didn't even try to line up the loaded chambers with the barrel. I just closed the cylinder and started on the trigger right away. That cut down my reload time to eight seconds. Uh, that's still basically an eternity in a gunfight, but a partial reload would have gotten Pence back in the fight a few seconds earlier. We've just been looking at a very narrow slice of the Newhall incident today. I don't wanna give the impression that the whole event hinged on a revolver reload. By the time Pence was holding an empty gun, a number of mistakes had already been made. I focused on the reload because I wanna help set the record straight on the pocket full of brass myth. We all wanna learn from tragedies like Newhall so that innocent people don't die in vain. To do that, we really need to make sure we're starting with the correct facts. And we also have to apply some wisdom and care when we're analyzing these unique outlier incidents. They're almost always the result of multiple layers of failure. We can't do justice to the lessons learned just by repeating vague platitudes like train how you fight. Special thanks to Jay Grazio for the video clip of the dump pouch. I hope you guys found this interesting. If so, do me a favor and subscribe to our channel. And the next time you need ammo, get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.